Okay, so then, but you just quoted verses that God in the Old Testament, New Testament has many spiritual sons that he spiritually begets, not physically, not sexually, because God is not a physical being who has sex. So if David is God's son, Solomon is God's son, Israel is God's son, and Jesus is God's son, and believers are God's sons, that means Allah is a liar. All right. So that's number one. Number two, no one denies that God has many sons and daughters, because our faith is, that we, through the grace of the Lord Jesus, by trusting in him and clinging to him, we too become sons and daughters of God, correct? Correct. Number three, that doesn't mean that Jesus' sonship is not unique. Because though God has many sons and daughters, no son and daughter is like Christ because Christ's sonship is different and superior to everyone else's. For example, I want you to go to Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Okay, now quote a single passage or plethora of passages in the Old Testament, New Testament, where any other Son of God spoke the way Jesus did. Jesus said, as the Son... He knows the Father in the same way that the Father knows him, and he alone is qualified to make God known to mankind. Which other son made such an assertion? Say no other one. So just because David is God's son or Solomon is God's son, that doesn't mean they are the sons of God in the same sense that Jesus is, because Jesus claimed to be the son of God in such a way that made him superior to all creation and equal to the Father in essence. Hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, because the way... The way Christ claimed it was in a sense that he made him equal to the Father. Yeah, yeah, in essence. So because yep. he was like, so no other son of God yep. is equal to the Father, can do whatever the Father does, mm -hmm. except Jesus. So that's why he's unique. Now I'm going to give you some other verses to prove that. Yep. Go to John 11, 23 to 27. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Okay, can you show me any other son of God who says, I am the resurrection and life, and whoever believes in him shall never die? No. So did David claim to be the resurrection of life? No. Solomon? No. Any Israelite? No. So Jesus' sonship is unique in that as God's son, he can claim things and do things that no creature can but only God because he's equal to the Father, right? Yeah. All right. Now go to John 5 and read 14 to 18 so we can break this down. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more. Let's now, before you move on, let me explain. This is a paralytic that Jesus just healed on the Sabbath. So this man was paralyzed, and Jesus healed him on the Sabbath, right? Right. Okay, now read. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So let's, uh, let's break down the passage. Jesus works on the Sabbath day by healing people physically. The Jews were offended because the law prohibits a Jew from working on the Sabbath, right? Right. But Jesus then justified it saying, look, my father works every day. He's working till this day. He works on the Sabbath and doesn't take a break, break right? Right. Because that's what he said. My father's working till now, till this day, right? Right. So if you notice what Jesus says in John 5, 17, my father doesn't take a break. He works every day. Even on the Sabbath day, because it's my father who's sustaining all creation, giving life to all creation, and preserving creation. So if you were to take a break, then creation couldn't exist, right? 
Right. So is the father actively working on Sabbath by preserving creation and giving life even on the Sabbath so he doesn't take a break? Yes. Jesus says, similarly, like my father works on the Sabbath and is exempt from observing the Sabbath because he's not subject to the Sabbath. He owns the Sabbath. I, too, being his son, have the same authority and right he does to work on the Sabbath because like father, like son. So if my father is working on the Sabbath, I am his son who does everything he does and the way he does it every day of the week. This is why they thought he was claiming to be equal to God. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's amazing. Thank you. You oh. got it, right? Yeah. So my father is exempt from Sabbath observance because he has to work on the Sabbath because if he stops working, there goes life. So he's actively working on Sabbath to preserve life. I, too, being his son, being equal to him, I, too, have the same right he does to work on every day of the week, including the Sabbath, because Sabbath rules do not apply to me any more than they apply to my father. That's why the Jews went crazy, right? Yeah, it's because it's because he was God, right? He is well, God. Well, yeah, only God is exempt from yeah. the Sabbath, right? Oh, yeah, perfect. And that's, that's But now perfect. notice, yeah. he's not the father, though. Right, not the father. He's the son who's equal to the father, so that means he's claiming to be God in such a way where he doesn't end up saying he's the father, but that he's the son of the father who, like the father, is God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? And then, yeah. And then is the reason, like, they also make – I don't remember. I think it was uh, the verse prior, I think. But I think, like, the reason that he is able or, like, claims these things and that it's he's the unique son of God is also, like, more proof is that when he makes claims yeah, – Because which – Quote to me, a single son of God beside Jesus that is exempt from observing the Sabbath and that Sabbath restrictions do not apply to him. And quote to me, another son of God besides Jesus who can do whatever the father does, the way the father does it on every day of the week. Yeah, I can't. You with me there? Yeah. Okay. Now, Benjamin, you're making the point of Jesus that he's saying – that there are certain exemptions on the Sabbath, but healing someone on the Sabbath day wasn't one of them. But that was Jesus' point. You hypocrites. If your neighbor's donkey falls in a ditch, even on the Sabbath, won't you go and try to take him out? And that's not a violation because the purpose of the Sabbath is to give rest and preserve life, not destroy it. But to them, Jesus didn't have to heal on the Sabbath because that person wasn't going anywhere. He could have healed them after the Sabbath. He goes, no, I can heal him any day I want, even on the Sabbath. Because like the Father, I'm exempt from Sabbath restrictions. And like the Father, I preserve life and give rest every day of the week. Because when someone is ill or in pain or emotionally distressed, then he or she cannot rest on the Sabbath and enjoy the Sabbath and God's presence because they're too occupied with their pain and misery. Right? Now, if you're there, I got a few more verses from John 5 for you to look at. Okay, go to John 5, read 19 to 21. Let's just read 19 for starters. Right. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Now, before you move on, most heretics stop there. See, he ain't God. God can do everything. Okay, now finish John 5. Um, okay, so, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Now reread it again, 19. Okay. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Okay. Notice he says, I, the Son, cannot do a single thing on my own initiative. I can only do whatever the Father does, whatever I see the Father doing. And whatever the Father does, the Son, I, the Son, do it in the same manner, right? Mm-hmm. Now, can you show me a creature, not just another son of God saying, I can only do what God does. That's all I can do. And I can do whatever God does the way God does it. No. Can a creature say, I only do what God does? No. Did David only do what God wanted him to do and what God does? No. No, he committed adultery. He murdered. He lied. He connived, right? Right. Did Solomon do only what God does? Nope. All right. Now, could David and Solomon do everything that God does the way God does it? 
Mm-mm. No. But Jesus said, I can. Right. And that's all I can do. I only do what I, he does, and no more, no less. I only do what he tells me to do, no more, no less. And I can do everything he does, but the things that the Father does are things that only God can do. For example, oh. read John 5, 20 to 21. It just opened up the entire chapter, so it'll be easier for John 5. So we're going to oh, go okay. through John 5 yeah. real quickly. Okay. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. Okay, let me ask you a question. Can you show me another Son of God saying, like the Father who gives life and raises the dead, I too give life to whomever I want? No. But Jesus just claimed that, right? Right. Now read 22 and 23, John 5, 22, 23. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor him, all should honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Now, can you show me another Son of God, like David or Solomon, saying, God requires that everyone honors me the same way they honor God? No. Can you honor a creature... In the same way you honor God? No. Because that would be idolatry, right? Right. Okay. And yet Jesus says, the Father has commanded that I judge everyone to determine their fate and destiny. So they realize their eternal life is dependent on me so that they can come to the conclusion and realization that because their life depends on me and I determine where they will spend eternity, they must then give me the honor that the Father receives in the same way that he receives it. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Can a created being claim that kind of honor? Because the way we honor God is that the Father being God, I love him unconditionally. I love him more than anything, more than my life, and I need to be willing to give up everything, even my life for him. But that's not a love I give to someone else. And I pray to the Father, and I sing to the Father, and I obey the Father, and I put his command over against everyone else's command. And I'm willing to suffer persecution to put his will ahead of everyone else's will. But Jesus says, that's the same honor you must give me. If you pray to the Father, you got to pray to me. If you love the Father unconditionally more than yourself and anything, you must love me the same way. And if you sing to the Father, you sing to me. If you praise the Father, you praise me. And if you're willing to die for the Father, you must be willing to die for me. Amen. Yeah. Now, which creature can demand that kind of devotion? None. All right. Now, I want you to read 25 and 26. Okay. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Now, let me ask you a question. Can you show me another Son of God, like David saying, the hour will come where those who are dead hear my voice, I, David, by my voice, will make them alive spiritually. That's how powerful my voice is. My voice gives life to all who hear it. No. So no other son of God spoke this way? No. But Jesus says, I, the son of God, will give spiritual life to everyone who hears my voice. But not only does he give them spiritual life, because read 26. For as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself. Now, what Jesus is saying is the father having life in himself makes him the source of life. So all life comes from the father. He is the source of all life. But here he says that the father has included the son alongside of him as being the source of life. So all life comes from the father and the son equally. Can you show me another son of God saying, as the father has life in himself to give to others, so too is granted me. That life in myself to give to others so that I am one with him in giving life to others. No, I, I can't. No, right? Okay, then read 20, 29. What else does Jesus do at the hour, meaning the last day? Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Okay, Jesus said in 25 and 28, 29, the hour will come where the dead will hear his voice. 
not only the spiritually dead, but now he's talking about all the dead physically. Because he says, the hour will come when they will hear, hear his voice. And 25 tells us it's the voice of the Son of God, right? Right. And yet at that hour, both the wicked and the righteous will physically be resurrected out of their tombs by the power of the sound of Jesus' voice. Who does Jesus think he is? That by his voice, he can raise the dead physically to stand in judgment before him, both the righteous and the wicked. You know how many people have died? Right. And yet Jesus says, by the sound of my voice, I will resurrect all the dead physically to stand before me in judgment. Amen. Can you show me another son of God who speaks this way? Not one. All right. So I think we've destroyed the Mohammedans, right? To show that if... Yeah. God has children spiritually. He's not a physical being. We're not Mormons. We don't believe he has sex and sires children sexually. He's a spiritual being who begets spiritually by the word that you hear. And when you hear it, the Holy Spirit then makes you alive, unites you to Christ, and makes you a child of God. He's spiritual children. The Quran denies that. And Jesus, among all the sons, is the unique son who's equal to the Father, who can do what the Father does and demands the same worship the Father receives, which is not true of any other son. So there you go. So is that it? You got more? Um, I think that's good. For the, definitely destroyed the, the Muslim arguments. But there's another thing where I was a little lost about because I remember when I was studying it a little bit, the, the Psalm 2, I noticed oh, when I was – yeah. Sorry, what? You want to know about Psalm 2 again, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm just – well, it's not really like a, an objection, I guess. It's more of like just like trying to understand it. Yeah. Like not, not – Well, you're, you were asking me how do we know it's a messianic psalm? Well, yeah. we know in one sense it's messianic, meaning it's a psalm that will be fooled by, by Messiah, even the Jews admit, because can you show me where verses 8 to 9 have been fulfilled in the life of any Davidic king? Read Psalm 2, 8 yeah. to 9. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations of your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Okay, so you read all the way to 9? Oh, sorry. You will break them with a scepter of iron. You will dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Okay, so my question to you is, at what point in David's reign or Solomon's reign did the nation submit themselves to the rule of David or Solomon where they became the possession of David and Solomon or Solomon? None. Never. They never ruled over the nations. So that's why the Jews realize these are unconditional promises that God made, meaning these are promises God swore will be fulfilled, but they were not fulfilled in David. They're not fulfilled in Solomon or any other Davidic king. So that's why they realize, ah, then that means we must wait the Messiah to come to fulfill these promises. Right. Right? Yeah. And is it is it good to use like the end of verse 2, how it says his anointed? Or is Yeah, it well, if you go to Acts 4, 23... All the way to 31. If you start reading from 25, you're going to see that this Psalm 2, verse 1 and 2, is quoted by the apostles mm -hmm. and their disciples, filled the Holy Spirit, and applied to Jesus Christ and the Father. Go ahead. Go to Acts 4, 23 to 31. Read. Who quotes okay. Psalm 2, 1 and 2, and who applies it to the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay. Want me to read uh, 23 to 25? Uh, Acts 4, 23 to 31, sir. Okay. Don't ever make me correct you again. You said just making sure he's 31, right? Sir? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, you're, see, I got low self-esteem, sir, and you're hurting my feelings. Go ahead. On being released, they went to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders has had said to them. When they heard this, they lifted their voices in unity to God and prayed, Lord, you are God who has made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And who by the mouth of your servant David said. Now, before you move on. Who wrote Psalm 2? Who spoke the words of Psalm and wrote them down by inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Who? David. David. And what did David write? And what did David speak? Watch here. Why did the nations rage and the people devise vain things? The kings of the earth came and the rulers were assembled together against the Lord and against his Christ. Indeed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate. Herod. Herod. Oh, sorry, Herod and Pontius so it's Pilate. It's like you want a rod so you can beat people's faces in. See, yeah, give me a rod. What's wrong with you, man? Violent. <laughs> okay, so notice 
the apostles, including Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, quote Psalm 2, verses 1 to 2, right? Right. And they say David spoke these words and wrote them down, obviously by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then how do they interpret it? Indeed. Reread that part again. Indeed. Okay. Um, wait, I can't. Oh, yeah. Indeed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were assembled together against your holy son, Jesus, whom you have anointed. So when was it fulfilled? Um, to Jesus, when Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were so assembled exactly. together. Exactly. When the rulers of Israel conspired with the Gentile rulers to have Jesus killed on the cross instead right. of submitting to his yoke. That's when Psalm 2 began to be fulfilled. All right. Keep reading now all the way to 31. Okay. To do what your hand and your counsel had ordained to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with great boldness by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be performed in the name of your holy son, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Amen. Now you see verse 30, by whose power, by whose authority, for whose sake were miracles performed in verse 30? Uh, the, your holy son, Jesus. So yeah, Jesus. Can you show me any other son of God whose name, authority, presence, and power was invoked to perform miracles? No. Can you show me where it says, in the name of David, I command you to rise from the dead. In the name of David, I command you to see. In the name of David, I command you to come out. No. And yet they did that in the name of Jesus, huh? Yeah. And in Psalm 2, verse 1 or 2, the apostle said that started to be fulfilled when Herod, uh, Pontius yeah. Pilate, the Romans, with the ru Jewish rulers, all gathered together to kill Jesus, the Messiah, because they refused to submit to his yoke. Yeah. Okay, now... That was Psalm 2. Now, who wrote it again in Acts 4.25? Read Acts 4.25. It says, And who by the mouth of your servant David said, Why did the nations rage and the people devise vain things? You know what's amazing about that? What? Had it not been for Acts 4, we would not know who wrote Psalm 2. Do you know why? Why? Because if you start Psalm 2, there is no superscription telling us David wrote it. Right. Go to Psalm 2 and sit, find it for me. Okay. Is there any... Title superscription saying a Psalm of David in Psalm 2? No. So, and yet it was the apostles, such as Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, who said David wrote Psalm 2, which means it must have been an ancient tradition believed by the Jews. And the apostles confirmed that tradition and amen it that this is a Psalm of David. Now, Psalm 2 is what number? There are about 151 Psalms, right? Right. And this is Psalm number what? Two. All right. Now, if it's Psalm number two, I want you to go to Acts 13, 32 to 33. So Psalm number two, right? Now, before you do that, before you do that, go to Psalm two, read verse seven. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Okay, so you are my son. Today I have begotten you, right? That's Psalm right. two, verse seven, right? Right. And it's Psalm number two, right? You can now go to Acts 13, 32 to 33. And we declare to you glad tidings. That promise which was made to the fathers, God has fulfilled this for us, their children, is that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm. You what are psalm my son. Number? Second. So even for the Jews of Paul's day, this psalm was psalm number two because Paul says this is the second psalm. And notice what he quotes. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. So you catch it. It's the New Testament, specifically the book of Acts that told you this is the second psalm. And it was written by David. Yeah. Right. Wow. So you got your answer. I don't know if you did. Yeah, it's amazing. 